Hey y'all, it's Laura and we are doing a wild about washi today. So I have these three photos of my kiddos helping out with some gardening work and I have my freckled fawn April kit. And I really loved that they introduced a 12 by 12 kit this month. It was very exciting. I think it's very versatile to use 12 by 12 papers because I was able to do a 12 by 12 layout, a nine by 12 layout, and a traveler's notebook with this kit this month because I had the larger papers. So to start with, I decided to go with a simple vertical background using the pattern paper, of course, but we are going to bring in the washi, don't worry, it has a very important part of this layout. Now these three photos are of my kiddos helping with some gardening. My husband was doing a heavy clean out of the flower beds and trimming up the bushes and all of that good stuff and he wanted to show the kids how to do it. One of the things that's really important in our household is that our kids are prepared to be adults and having two teenagers, one almost a teenager, we are putting a lot of emphasis on that in the last couple of years and really working with them on homeowner skills and just basic needs. So things like changing the oil in their car, cooking food for themselves, purchasing things online, purchasing things in stores, taking care of your garden, taking out the trash, cleaning your home, all those things, we are teaching them how to do it so that hopefully it will help them be more successful, independent adults. I know that when I first left home, I was able to do a lot of those things myself, but some of them I wasn't. And so we've really tried to just pick as many things as possible to teach our kids how to do them, show them how to do them, illustrate how to do them, and have them try it. And that way they've at least got a little bit of experience under their belt before they become adults. My oldest is turning 18 this summer, but we do have him for one more year before he goes to college. So have that one more year. <laughs> <laughs> to help him soak up the knowledge that he needs when he goes to college. So for this layout, I decided to do a combination design of a vertical and a shelf. So if you're familiar with my go-to designs, I have a whole series of videos talking about very basic backgrounds that you can use to build a layout on top of. And a Vertical is just having a large strip of paper or even a small strip of paper in the background and just building your layout from that one vertical strip. Sometimes I add borders like I did with this one. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just draw lines around the sides. This one is also going to have a shelf. So a shelf is simply a horizontal line, whether it's with washi like I'm doing here. So I'm taking some washi, putting it on top of some white cardstock with a little extra adhesive because my washi tends not to stick long term. It's all washi, not just freckled fawn. I find all of my washi in this Mississippi weather tends to just come unstuck after a while. So I go ahead and add that extra adhesive just to be safe. But by adding it to the white cardstock, you can't see through it. It's no longer translucent. And so I can use it on this patterned paper background, this large strip in the center, without that pattern peeking through my washi. And so I'm going to use these washi strips to create some little shelves that are gonna come in from the left and the right side of my layout. And as you're gonna see, we're gonna balance our photos on top of those shelves. Now washi tape is great for this technique, for any kind of shelf technique because it is already a horizontal line. <laughs> so very, very simply cutting it out and arranging it on your page, laying your photos on top of the shelves. It gives them a little boundary, a little support, if you will, visual support for your photos. And I do really enjoy that style. I will put my go-to video series in the whole playlist. There's a whole playlist where you can just watch them straight through. And there's a PDF for you to print out and save for yourself as a reference if you'd like. I will put that at the end of this video. It'll pop up as a little optional video to click on. So that way, if you want to check out those go-to videos, you can, because there's quite a few. I think there's 11, <laughs> but I've added a couple since then, so it might be more than that now. I have one more to do actually this year, one more go-to design that I've just recently become very excited about. So now I've got my washi strips. I've also got a couple of scrap pieces of paper as well, kind of alternating between the two, and I'm going to create my shelves. Now, one of the things I'm thinking about with these shelves is that I want my photos to just sort of rest on them, and then I'm gonna build an embellishment cluster right where the shelves meet the photos. And that's exactly what I'm thinking. So I'm thinking little shelves coming out from the sides, 
of my photos building up on top of those shelves as my embellishment clusters. I am trying to mix and match the designs a little bit, trying not to put too many of the same color together and making sure that I'm not putting two super busy patterns right next to each other. So this top shelf ends up getting modified later because I felt like the floral and those little potted plants were a lot for one shelf. So I do end up swapping those out with other ones, but I'm bringing in some more washi to do some more strips. I will say <laughs> that April's kits came with something a bit different. Normally the washi tape is in six by six sheets and this month it came in three by three sheets, I believe, but you get double, you get twice as much. So you still get the same amount of washi that you normally do. It's just smaller than normal. You just get a bunch more. So that was interesting to play with, something to try a little bit different. If you just have the small sheets of washi, you could still do this technique. So as you can see, I'm still playing around with it. I'm gonna move things around a lot because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And instead of just attaching the shelves to the background, I decided to attach them to the back of my photo so that I had a little bit more control over where they landed on the page to make sure that my photo was lined up the way I wanted it to be as well as the strips. So I'm gonna do that for every single one of these strips. I just go ahead and add a little bit of tape to the back of my photos and then just line up the washi right there behind it, right where I wanted it. And I did have someone ask why I use double-sided tape instead of ATG and I thought I'd give you a little background on that. So I have never tried an actual ATG gun. Uh, that Those big giant adhesive rollers just are not for me. I just find them con kind of obtrusive on my desk. So the idea of having one, not a fan. I prefer my adhesive to be fairly small and easy to manage. And double-sided tape is that. Now as for tape runners in general. My experience has not been great long term. Short term, it's fantastic, but I have had to repair entirely too many of my layouts from say five to seven years ago that I used tape runner on that are now in pieces and I've had to completely retape the whole thing together. Now, ultimately, the only adhesive that is guaranteed to keep your layouts together is glue. <laughs> glue will do a much better job long term. I find double sided tape does the job well enough for me, but I also use a lot of double sided tape. I don't rely on one single strip of tape to keep the layout together. So you will see me use quite a bit. I make sure that my entire layout is taped down really well. Part of that is because I live in Mississippi and we have extremely humid summers. And even the spring and fall, we have a ton of water happening in this state. Uh, my son decided to look it up today and Mississippi is something like the third wettest state in the US. We get a ton of rain every single year and every season. So having well adhered layouts is a must. It's just a must because that humidity is going to make the tape fail and I don't want it to fail. So we're going to use double sided tape because it does the job. Now, some people find it difficult to work with. I've never really had an issue with it. American crafts version of double sided tape doesn't tear easily for me, but this stuff just comes from Amazon and it's really inexpensive, just off brand tape. So I will put a link for you in the description box below in the comments. I'll put it in the comments so it's easier to find, pin it to the top. And that way you can go find the tape and try it for yourself. It's really cheap from Amazon. And so that way, if you want to try it, give it a go, see if it works for you. If you're having adherence and adhesion issues. Now this beautiful, beautiful set of wood veneer pieces was in the April freckled fawn kit and it was heavily plant themed. It's interesting. Most of the freckled fawn kits do not have a theme. They're fairly generic. They could be used for anything. This one had a very heavy plant mom sort of theme, which was different. Now, you may have heard me mention this in the past. I don't do plants. <laughs> I don't do outside much, to be fair. I don't like bugs and I live in Mississippi, so I don't do much outsiding. And plants are outside 
and plants can be inside, but I just don't pay any attention to them. I don't give them the time of day. I don't try to keep them alive. I have too many other humans in my house to keep alive that I just can't concentrate on plants. However, my kids love plants. They love being outside. And so I go take pictures of them being outside and then go back and hide inside. <laughs> So I did have these little alphas and I decided to just call this yard work and this could have worked. I actually kind of wish I'd left it the title this way. It does work just fine, but in the end, I am a creature of habit and I do prefer to have my title stay together, especially when it's essentially just a two word phrase. I do kind of prefer it to be together. So I decided instead to lift it up yard onto the photo and then I'll move work underneath of it. But this would have worked just fine. It was just in the moment. I was feeling a little insecure with my title being separated like that. I didn't love it. And so I just decided to do this, but that would have worked just fine. Stylistically, it looked better where it was. <laughs> you may have seen a shadow there from one of my kids leaning over the desk to see what I'm doing. And this layout is almost done. These cute little butterflies were in one of the pattern papers and I fussy cut several of them out to add a little bit of movement to the page. So I have those scattered around my little plants. And then I have the little enamel dots which come on every single freckled fawn kit. And I'm gonna use those to add a little bit of scattering around the page. Scattering and splattering is how I finish every single layout that I make. And sometimes I use splattering as a uncontrolled splatter and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just stick to this Nouveau Drop controlled splatter. Sometimes I use both. So either one is good. If you're not comfortable with uncontrolled splattering, give Nouveau Drops a try. That way you can control exactly where those little drops of gold land. They do come in a lot of other colors, but again, a creature of habit, I do prefer gold. Now I have little trails behind all of my butterflies, again, adding that image of movement and then coming in with some Heidi Swope color shine, the very last bottle in my stash, which is almost gone and adding just a little bit of splatter around the clusters for a bit of fun. And then this layout will be complete. Stay around for these still photos and until next time, bye y'all.